the occasion of the ninth anniversary and the third General Assembly of the Rengma Saluzi that Rengma Youth Organization has a vision, has a purpose, has an objective to fulfill it. In this nine years of a journey, we have came across lots of things where we have achieved lots and we have felt lots. But today as we come together, we are here to reimagine ourselves, redefine ourselves under the theme beyond us and redefining our future. On behalf of the organizing committee, on behalf of the office of Rengma Salozi, and on behalf of the host village, Gandhi Group Youth Organization, I warmly welcome each and every one of you. Our President Ino Kenneth Kat, President Rengma Saluzi, for the presidential address. I will stand firm no matter what. Respected, honored guests, today I'm filled with profound gratitude and humility for the unwavering, unwavering support and affection you have shown towards the RZ, the Rengma Saluzi. Your dedication, love, and investment, both material and intellectual, have been the cornerstone of our organization's success. Beyond us, redefining our future has been more than just a team, but it has been a guiding principle urging us to embrace change, unity, and resilience in the face of rapidly evolving world. Together we have navigated the change challenges posed by technological advancement, socio-geopolitical shifts, and environmental crisis emerging stronger and more united than ever before. As custodian of our tradition and heritage, it has been our collective responsibility to ensure their preservation and relevance in the changing world. The spirit of Beyond Us has called us to transcend our comfort zones, foster inclusivity and cultivate innovation, laying the foundation for a brighter future for generations to come. I extend my heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you for upholding the values that define us as a community integrity, compassion, and solidarity. Your commitment to our shared vision of collective well-being and sustainability has been truly inspiring. As I pass the torch to the next generation of leaders, I'm confident that they will carry forward the spirit of the Regma Solozi with the same patience and dedication as you have shown. Together, let us Continue to dream big, think boldly, and act decisively in shaping the future that is truly beyond us. Thank you for your support, your love, your belief in the power of community. It has been an honor and privilege to serve as your president. Now we will hear from Engineer Tosino Semi, President Rengma Ho. On behalf of the Rengma Ho, -ho I extend warm greetings to all present at this Rengma Salhuzi Third General Assembly of 2024. I want to express my sincere appreciation to Mr. Kenneth Cart. President Salozi and his team for their commendable service during their tenure. I'm confident that you and your team will continue to excel in, in your future endeavors. The team beyond us redefining our future urges us to think beyond the present 
aiming for more inclusive, sustainable, and empowering future. As the vibrant and dynamic good of our community, Salusi hold immense potential to shape our future. Your creativity and innovation can bring about positive change. Harness your energy to pursue your dreams and make difference in society. Advocate for justice, equality and sustainability. In a world of constant change, it is vital to adapt new situations. Embrace change with the grace of God. Together with unity and collaboration, we can overcome obstacles, build strong relationships, foster understanding and create a better future for all. Before I conclude, let us reflect the life of Joseph from the Bible. His integrity and faithfulness to God, despite adversity, serve as a powerful example for all of us. I would like to implore our youth to strive to emulate Joseph's integrity, humility, and holiness. As you strive for excellence under God's guidance, you may leave behind, and I pray that may you leave behind a legacy of hope and aspiration for our generations to come. God bless you all. Long live Rehma Saluzi. Thank you.
invite you know Zantilu Tep, Secretary Search Committee, to take his time. Thank you, Chairperson, for this time. As enshrined in the Constitution of Rangma Salunzi under Article 12, I, on behalf of the Search Committee of Rangma Salunzi, for the tenure 2024 to 2027, will be presenting to you the new team who will be leading the Rang Masalozi for the data 2024 to 2027. But before that, before I announce, I want to congratulate and thank the present team led by Mr. Kenneth Card as president and his esteemed colleagues for the tenure 2021 to 2024. Under their dynamic leaders under, and under their guidance, the Rangma Salusi has come thus far, and today we have all seen their achievements, and we have all, seen, as we are the witness of the achievements and their activities. So, before I declare the new team, I want to say thank you to the outgoing team led by Mr. Kenekar and his teams. We are very much thankful to you, and on behalf of all the Rangma youths, I want to say thank you very much. And this will be the last day for them. So. Shall we all give a round of applause to our outgoing Rengma Saluji team? <laughs> I, on behalf of the Search Committee, would like to proudly announce and confidently announce the new team who will be leading the Rengma Saluji for the tenure 2024 to 2027. So, as I read out the name, I request the new team to kindly come and make a line over here. So that, uh, and after that, I would request our Reverend Kaiwalo Executive Secretary, Council of Rangma Party Chairs, to kindly pray for our new team. For the post of President Rangma Saluzi for the tenure 2024 to 2027, President Mr. Kawang Hung Tep from Kasha Daho Range. <laughs> President number one, Mr. Kishito Kent Rangma from Sogi. Vice President number two, Gitang Lom Mark from Gitaga Range. General Secretary, Mr. Hiyalo Jemu from the Sobanyu Group. We have two joint secretaries. Number one, Dr. Dick Hankart from Kandi. The second joint secretary is the Chosin Gapan from Pension Yeloja. <laughs> Next, we have our Secretary of Finance, Mr. Andrew Kent from Tamin Yeloja. <laughs> Next, so Secretary of Social and Culture, Cultural, Kasiha Kat from Kandi. Secretary Information and Publicity, Kanilo Regma. Secretary Women Affairs, number one, Ms. Ms. Mercy Kent from Sabinian. Second, Ms. Loshila Jishing from Sabinian. <laughs> Next, we have our spokesperson for Regma Saluzi, Mr. R.N. David Buck. Next, we have the treasurer for Rangma Saluzi, Mr. David Kent, Samin Town. And we have three advisors, namely our outgoing president, Mr. Kenneth Kat. The second, Mr. Kolo Lowry. And the third advisor, Dr. Lilong Chamche. Yeah. So may I kindly request our executive secretary, Reverend Haiwal Aupon to kindly pray for our new team who will be leading the Rangma Saluzi for the tenure 2024-2027. Congratulations to the new team. Before I pray, let me read the word of God. Psalms 37, verse 5 and 6. Commit your ways to the Lord.
trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. This is the word of God. Ngwapi, ngpigan rilo, aleke hitush tile, ikikisa china, zaano. Kime tapawa, kitsatompawa, kime hipawa, na se nuna chenobile, wakio we, tim, kenet, numa tim tuna, Ma hanka hanku chinu na anki nuku kuli saki chwawi chigan jiku kuzo chidanzi hibadu ga shishibine na mato ki kache na mato pikeche mato sati zuche na mbiko ajumatu ka hatsi tisa nuna ku kuli saki ka hanku vetu lokza jisuna wina nonga tizenga leke sawa ki mitsi ki chida lei amen may god bless the new team and made a new team and all of us live to our motto akazu inyi my land my people thank you come to the solidarity speeches to have our special invitees here in our midst i request uh, all the three presidents to take time one, one after another uh, for which i request our president iwayo to lead the solidarity speech at the outset i extend greetings from the Angami Youth Organization to each and every one of you present here. Kenneth and his team had started a very good purpose since its inception. Without saying much, we have all witnessed how and in what ways the Rengmas have benefited because of the Rengmas LOZ. I have personally witnessed that the unity of the student and youth leaders of their of the Rengma is the biggest asset of the community. I wish and hope that this fraternity, this understanding between the youth and student leaders of the Rengma community may continue and may you prosper in leaps and bounds. Youth organizations have been formed under various circumstances and situations. Prior to the ceasefire, youth organizations have been felt necessity, necessary to protect its community, its people, and its land. However, time has changed. Our priorities have also changed. No doubt, our land and our people are our priority. But today, as a youth organization, we believe that the biggest challenge we face, we are facing today, is the environment, the envir the depleting environment, vis-a-vis -vis the climate change. Let us all put our efforts together to protect and to promote this environment. As an Angami, we do not see the Kazolza issue just as a matter of land dispute. But we see the Kazolsa as a rainforest, as an ecosystem, which is rapidly getting extinct. Let us all endeavor to protect this rainforest, this reserves for us are the ones which are giving us conducive weather, all of us are witnessing, particularly this season, that our water resources are drying up. Our, our uh, animal species are getting extinct. Let us take this as a very alarming challenge in our present society today. As the theme of our, of our conference today says, beyond us, redefining our future. Yes, the Angami Youth Organization has had a very cordial relationship with the Rengma Sebozi team headed by Hino Kenneth. They had several instances of having interactions, even going out, outing, having a good personal time with each other as well. So according to the theme which you have to set, let us all once again foster better relations and better ties among the youth organizations 
protect and promote our people. Taking this opportunity, I would also like to congratulate Kenneth and his team for doing wonderful efforts and results, not only to the Rengma community, but also setting benchmark and good examples for your community in particular and the Nagas in general. We look, the Angami Youth Organization, look forward to the theme of, you know, Kewayong Tap to have a very successful and meaningful tenor between the Angamis and the Rimas. Thank you. On this auspicious occasion of Rengma Selozi 9th anniversary come 3rd General Assembly 2024, I, on behalf of the Lothar Youth Hoho, would like to give a warm greetings to all the members present here on this special day. It is indeed an honor and a choice moment for us to be a part of this occasion as a special invitees. We are so glad and happy to see that our president, Rema Salozi, under the dynamic leadership of Ms. Eno uh, Kenneth Gat. We feel that our Ringma brothers are also progressing like the rest of Nagas, and we are so proud of his leadership. And we would like to congratulate him and his team for successfully concluding their tenure. And we would also like to uh, give a best of luck to the new team for 2024-2026. Last but not the least, I can proudly say that the bond of brotherhood and friendship among the Rengmas and the Lothas will always remain the same and intacted in our hearts. Lastly, as a token of love, unity, and appreciation towards all our Rengma brothers and sisters, I, on behalf of the Lothar Youth Ho Ho, would like to give a small gift to the president, outgoing president, Mr. Kenneth Gat. So now, may I kindly request our outgoing president, Mr. Kenneth Gat, to kindly uh, accept a small gift. Going president, you know, Kenneth Gat. Greetings from the office of the Sumut organization. I also take this time to thank the Rengma Silozi and also congratulate the new team to be led by you know Kevin Ted, my friend. Naga societies are currently undergoing a significant, a significant transitional phase encompassing political, social, and economic realms. As it shifts from customary practices to contemporary formal structure, in this pivotal period of transition for Naga societies, it is imperative to foster unity and trust among Naga people. We cannot afford the erosion of trust among us Nagas in our shared endeavor. Bringing the youth together from diverse backgrounds and professions for a conclave as such serves as a catalyst for realizing 
common objectives and addressing critical issues such as youth unrest, cultural preservation, social justice, community development, and advocacy for inclusive development. It is at least said that future belongs to younger generation. Therefore, the involvement of youth voices is paramount in shaping the decision that will impact the trajectory of Naga society and future generations. As we commemorate the ninth anniversary of Rengma Silesi in Sichen under the theme Beyond Us, Redefining Our Future, the Sumut organization reaffirms its unwavering solidarity with Rengma Silesi, pledging to support both in crimes and in tribulations. Together, let us forge a path forward hand in hand, unity in our vision for a better tomorrow. Once again, we extend our gratitude to Rangma Silozi for the, for the gracious invitation to Sum Yut Organization. Long live Rangma Silozi. Thank you and Kuknalim. The three presidents of the vibrant your organization for extending your solidarity, your love, and your friendship to the Rengma Saluzi. Now, I would like to call upon Dr. Leron Chan Te, Convener Documentation Committee for the release of uh, Rengma Saluzi documentation. I stand here uh, to help facilitate the release of this uh, document that we have very uh, passionately worked upon. And uh, here, I would just like to make some very brief remarks. But before that, I take this, I take this opportunity to thank the president and colleagues of the IO, the Lotha Youth Hoho, and the Sumi Youth Organization for your presence. And all those special invitees who have come and made yourself uh, presence here this morning and this afternoon. When this uh, responsibility was given to us to document some of the important events and activities that the Rengma Salozi had undertaken in the past nine years, we felt that it was too big a challenge and that we will not be able to do justice. However, because of the support of our members, our seniors, uh, we have somehow come to the end of the completion of this very humble document. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the contributors. I would like to take, take this opportunity to thank the outgoing team for the continuous support that they have rendered to our documentation team. I take this opportunity to thank my colleagues, Janono Woj and uh, my brother, Kenilo Kent, and more to Kenilo Kent because I believe he was the donkey in the group and he worked tirelessly to make sure that this document uh, saw the light of the day. This document was named uh, Rengma Solozi and Odyssey. We started our journey in 2014 in the form of an interim body and 2015 with the new first team. And over the last nine years, Selozi had undertaken so many initiatives, but <clears throat> narrowing down to only one or uh, only three, that is the, the highway project, when the condition of our national highway was at its deplorable best or worst. We had played our part in the district demand, and we are here living in our present district, and we have to share.
give a shout out to our people, especially our youths, for standing firm to our demands. And also, our ever uh, uh, passionate desire to keep our district green, the green initiative projects that uh, Narema Selozi had undertaken over the past nine years. I think these are the three highlights of the activities that Rima Selozi has undertaken. And to encapsulate all the small, small events and activities and initiatives that Rima Selozi had uh, uh, contributed, it was very challenging. But nevertheless, as I said, through the continuous support of our members, our seniors, and the contribution of our uh, contribution of articles from our learned minds, we have prepared this very humble document. I would like to thank our uh, contributors of articles. I know it is difficult to sit and uh, do research and write and I believe that these uh, uh, articles that is there in the document will be able to enlighten us. Now uh, without wasting uh, much time, I would like to request our Honorable MLA who is also our honored guest to kindly come and uh, release our uh, document and put your signature for further uh, distribution. And uh, we would like to present the first copy to our honored guest, our honorable MLA, Architect Zong Asset. We would like to give the second copy to our special guest, Dr. A. Inshoga, Director of Higher Education. The third copy will be our official uh, guard file copy. And uh, for our members, we'll reach you out to Thank you once again, and we believe that your contribution in physical form, in the form of resources, whether it be financial or any other way, will continue and make this organization stronger so that we'll be able to foster brotherhood and good relations with each other and across our tribe. Thank you. Advisors, advisors, and don't go home, they can do that. Please, please come and show your face. Yeah. Yes. 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 Meanwhile, as they are being facilitated, it brings me a great pleasure to announce that all the gifts and presentation that has been meticulously prepared today by the Ringma talented entrepreneurs and youths so let us acknowledge their hard work and give a big round of applause to their valuable contribution and may this tribe increase. in this eco-friendly India where is greatly appreciated. Please help yourself and uh, drink water from the left side of the uh, program area, the scheduled area. So please kindly feel free to help yourself with a cup of water. You move to finish land. Thank you so much. Today we are very fortunate to have our Honorable Emily, who is very young, who is readily available all the time for Rangma.
Rengmas, for Rengma youths, for Rengma students, and elsewhere. And uh, he, we don't have to introduce him because we have, as a community, we have only one Emily, and we are so happy to have him. I request our honorable Emily, who is our honored guest, to take his time. gift of lives for which we are all gathered here today. Hello and all the vibrant youth gathered here today. I am delighted and I am honored to stand here before you at the ninth anniversary of ninth anniversary and the third general I mean, convention of the Rengma Solozi, hosted by Kanti Group. Firstly, I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to Rengma Solozi on reaching this remarkable milestone, led by none other than Kenneth Kart. I also would like to Congratulate the incoming team of office bearers, Rema Salozi. Considering the state as we have just seen, I'm optimistic and I'm hopeful that they will do even better. I wish the new team leaded to be led by Mr. Kawai Huntep all the very best in your future endeavors. As we commemorate nearly a decade of unity, determination, and progress under the banner of Rengma Solozi, I would like to reflect and recall the impressive achievement made by Rengma Solozi from walking 50 kilometer walk at home all the way from Temenu to Kohima. Our collective efforts have not only resonated but have also shaped the contours of our aspirations. This journey was not just about covering a distance but a significant step towards establishing our dear Temenu district, showcasing the unwavering spirit of unity of the Rengmas. Over the years, the Rengmas Salozi has stood as a beacon of hope and a force of change, advocating tirelessly for the rights and welfare of our community. As we delve into today's team on which we are gathered, beyond us, redefining our future. I would like to just take an example of how our forefathers had survived, how resilient they were, and how self-reliant and self-sufficient they were. Our forefathers, most of us may know, but most of us may have forgotten. Our forefathers taught us that Nothing worthy comes without effort. This wisdom reminds us that in our fight against social evils, social menace, shortcuts or reckless measures are not only unsustainable, but could potentially lead to greater loss. As we advocate for change and betterment, let us ensure that our methods and systems honor the sweat and sacrifices of those who walked before us. As I say, our forefathers were more sufficient. They were more sufficient. They were and they will never accept anything which comes by free or they will not 
gather anything effortlessly. In our Rangma tradition, if we happen to see a crab or something like, you know, uh, <coughs> the, I don't know what is, what, is, what is that called in English, rang, what we call it like squirrel, that we have to dig it very deep with so much of an effort. After digging up two or three feet only, we will get that small piece, that small red like, uh, you know, uh, a creature, and that is an exotic. Which, if our parents, forefathers happen to see it crawling over on, the, on the surface, they will not take it. Even though it is an exotic, they will not take it. Why? Because they observe and they adhere to their social norms and values. And that is deep rooted with honesty. That without any effort, we should not gain anything freely. Even for crab, most of, I think we are all rural based generation. We are, so to say, the first generation. We will all know. Even to get a crab, we have to sweat out. We have to, you know, go inside deep into the jungle. We have to scale stones of rivers and streams. The only way we get a crab, that also is an exotic. If our forefathers happen to see it crawling and it comes to you, they will not take it, they will not catch it because it is effortless. It is, it's coming by free, without any sway. So is the, so, so is same with what we call it lost and found. If a hundred rupee note, or for that matter, 500 or 1000 rupee note is seen, lost and we found it, we will not take it. They will not take it and they will not use it because it is free money. They are of the opinion and they truly believe in it that anything that comes by free, by free. And if we use it, There is definitely and surely going to be a greater loss, double, triple, or tenfold of that later on. That is how our forefathers were very observant of the social norms and values. They were morally very principled and they were very honest. Today, looking at our society, especially our youth, we are plagued with what is called unemployment. Why unemployment? Because everyone wanted to just go to the office, have a regular income of salary, and that is effortless. I apologize to those hardworking government officers. I am not trying to belittle the government employees. But what I'm trying to say here is that it is not only the job that we get from the government, it is job. Job means not only from the government's establishment, but job means even from the private sector. Our forefathers were more reliant, self-reliant. They were self-employed. We can also be self-employed like, like our forefathers. We can be prosperous. We can have a surplus lives without taking any resources that comes by free or in the form of gift and because of that we talk about corruption practices backdoor appointments in the government sectors having said all this what i'm trying to convey to our youth here is that there are lots and lots of avenues at our reach. The only thing that we have to do is to work and to sweat. We talk about redefining our future. We talk about our aspirations. We talk about the progress and prosperity. Yet, we refuse to embrace the harsh realities of struggles, of the challenges that one have to face, one have to face 
in order to achieve our aspirations. We have many drugs addicts in our society. We have encountered on daily basis the antisocial elements, thief, stealing, robberies, rape, abuse, manhandling, everywhere in our society. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to face it? Or are we going to dodge it? How do we define? How do we want our future to be for our children? In order to define a future that is conducive, that is peace, that is peaceful, that is harmonious, I think the best that we can learn is from the social norms and values, the moral principles that have been passed down to us by our forefathers, by embracing, by imbibing how the way they live. Very simple, in short, they live by sweat, they live by hard working, but not by corrupted practice, but not by gift, nor by inheritance of the resources and wealth, but as I said, by sweat and by hard working. That kind of society, that kind of future where we nurture into the heavy, into the uh, <clears throat> lives, mentalities of our younger generations that without working, without hard work, without sweat, nothing comes free. And even if by any chance it comes, it's not sustainable, it may incur even greater loss in the just near future. So that kind of honesty, that kind of, you know, uh, observance, observance of the social norms and values, keeping moral principle, should be inculcated into the minds of our younger generations. And we, as the leaders of the youth, we are the leaders of today, and also we are the shepherds of tomorrow's future. When we talk about the social menace, we all the time leave it to the prerogative, or we leave it to the responsibility of the law enforcing agencies, to the government, but our forefathers they were heroic in their approach, in their system. Because of that, they were very less, or so to say, injustice, corruptions were very less in our forefathers' days. Their drinks, their party, during festive times, their drinks, their dance, merry making, even the drunk, they get drunk. The more the more they get drunk, the mayor they used to be. No quarreling, no thief, no manhandling. Respect for the seniors, respect for the leaders, respect for the chief of the village. That was, you know, the, the qualities that they used to have. I think we should also be like them. We have to be brave in order to promote and advocate justice. Supposing somebody is being treated unjustly, even though we know it, we see it, under the very nose of ours, somebody is badly beaten up, someone's house is, you know, uh, 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 broken, and then there is some, you know, uh, thief, to your neighbor, next to your house, or somebody, especially in towns and cities, in Kohima, Dimapu, we happen to see some reckless, unruly youth manhandling the helpless 
girls or for all, all men, snatching their purse, stealing, extorting from the shops, demanding, and then manhandling. There, we don't see any brave souls. We don't see any heroism in our society. Our forefathers were not like that. They were heroic in their approach. Whenever there is anything, mishappenings, mischief, if something is being treated unjustly, they will stand up for each other. They will stand up for justice. That is how they lived. Even in the worst case of, you know, uh, famines, they used to share. They used to help each other. Even household, even individual activities, house making. Our parents, our villagers, they used to complete just building a bamboo house, of course, but in just one or two days, with community participation, with collective effort, uplifting each other, helping each other, that is how they get their things done in a short period of time, collectively, and for each other. So that kind of, you know, activities, that kind of mindset is what we are talking about. Putting it into the minds, in the mentalities of our younger generation. And even for ourselves, we have to start imbibing, embracing it, so that there will be lesser evil, I mean social uh, social evils, there will be lesser injustice, lesser unjust, and then there will be more, you know, community living, where nobody suspect each other. When we talk about redefining our future, I think with that kind of qualities that our forefathers used to have. We want to re relate that into our present day, today's life, and then we want to use it into our life so that we are self-reliant, we are not dependent on the government jobs alone, we will not point our fingers and blame your next door or your friend for the social evils or the corruption, but we will all be equally responsible for what is happening around us. Something in injustice, something wrong, maybe going to your neighbors or to a far distant friends or relatives or to some other communities, but it will not take time. That same thing will come to you, knocking at your door. And if you don't act now, if we don't, if we don't stood up and stand up, we are going to be the next victims of our own negligence and our own ignorance. That is what. That is why. Why I wanted to say this is that, as a young leaders, as the leaders of the youth, we should encourage each other to be self-reliant, to be observant of the social norms and values, to be honest, to be humble, respecting our elders was very important in our days, in our forefathers' life, but these days, that values are diminishing. So today, as we gathered here, I am optimistic that the deliberations and the discussions which will happen in a few hours, in few a week, will take place in a few hours time, there will be an innovative of ideas, there will be creativity, there will be many good outcomes that will come out of it. And while doing that, I'm hopeful that we will try to make a decision which will, 
improvise, which will change the life of our younger generations, and we will be able to benefit out of it. As we all know, the youth organizations or groups are often rated or considered as pressure group and more often they are not even the youth organizations they are tempted to take the laws into their hands even though there are government governmental agencies law and order that provision is there to take care of those things what we should be doing now is we should be a collaborator with the government. We should strengthen the hands of the government so that our law, the, the framework of the governmental laws is protected and implemented. And as we live in a democracy where everything has to be done by law in order to deliver justice, I want to urge our youth organizations, especially our Rema Sanuzi and its constituent units, wherever you are, from whichever range you are, or even for that matter, our neighboring communities, our Lota Youth Hohos, our Sumi Youth Organizations, our Angami Youth Organizations, I wanted to tell you that youth are the extended, we should, the youth organization should be used as an extended help, extended hand of the government agencies in order to create a conducive environment by abiding the law and order as a law and order abiding, uh, abiding citizens so that no organizations, no group, takes laws into the own hands in the case, in the event of any situations that may arise. Because the incidents like this had, you know, uh, <clears throat> made everybody think of the youth organizations to be that of, you know, taking laws into the own hands. Talking about Yeah. <clears throat> so talking about all this, we are standing at the crossroad and at this juncture. We should look beyond the horizons of possibilities. Let us pledge to redefine our future with actions that are reflective, respectful, and rooted in the rich heritage of our community. Let us build a future where our children not only thrive, but are also proud of the legacy we have left behind. I am optimistic that we can redefine our future into one that we can live, we can all be proud of, one that truly goes beyond us. Let us move forward together with courage and resolve to create a future that, resolve, uh, that reflects our deepest values and highest aspirations. Thank you and God bless you all.
I'm very happy to see more senior citizens today in the midst of you youths. I feel honored to stand before this uh, Rengmasoloji 9th Anniversary Com 3rd General Assembly. I congratulate the Rengmasoloji President and his team to lead this youth organization with a view to safeguard, protect and promote the traditional and cultural identity of the Rema Nagas. A youth is any person between the age of 15 years and 30 years, regardless of the gender he or she belongs. At this phase of life, the youth is, is always driven by the fantasy of freedom, heroism, toughness, muscle, stimulation, curiosity, judgmental attitudes, and even much more. Youth is the best period of life to cherish a big dream full of passion and energy. The world is changing very fast and the youths are at the forefront of this change. The youth always have been a driving force behind social economic development and they will continue to play a vital role. With the increase in global conflicts and the rise of terrorism, young people have a unique perspective and skill set that can be used to build peace and promote security. The youths are often on the front lines of community or conflict and violence. They also play a very important role in post-conflict reconstruction and reconciliation efforts. The generation of today or the youths in present times is growing up in an insecure and un unpredictable environment. Whereas on the one hand, there is no dearth of opportunities, which of uh, which of this on the right time can bring a great transformation in the lives of the people. On the other hand, there exist immense risks and challenges which if not correctly addressed can weaken the youth's potentialities. Fortunately or unfortunately, the youths are the backbone of a society and hence any determine the future of any given society. This is because all the other age groups the kids, teenagers, middle age, and senior citizens rely on youth and expect a lot from them. There is no reason to doubt that it is the youth that shapes the future of its people. Youths are expected to be diligent, hardworking, and dedication to serve their people. If the youths are indolent and weak, it led to the downfall of the people. If the youths are, I mean, it led to the downfall of people. Youth is the fountainhead of exuberance energy and dynamism of tomorrow. Therefore, prepare today and face tomorrow. The challenges are big, but surmountable with active participation of the youth. It is the youth who is going to take forward the legacy of our land and people to gain new heights. But when the youths are corrupt and lethargic, the faith of the people and land is bleak and bound on real in darkness. Such type of organization cannot progress but retrograde and fated to face steep downfall. Therefore, it is very important to take the unbridled vigor of the youths and give it to a right direction. By effectively channelizing these qualities and energy, any organization or group can attain limitless heights and bring accolades to its people and land. You are the youths of today. But tomorrow you may become liabilities, come what may. If you don't perform well in the present times, you may face serious repercussions in the near future. Your hard work and dedication to the people of today uh, will not go west but pay off in the days to come. The challenges you are facing today may be small, but tomorrow it may appear bigger and tougher, which leads to insurmountable situations. It is therefore essential to work uh, diligently towards your goal and achieve its target. Never say waste your youth, uh, never lay waste your youth, but use it to your optimum capacity. It is difficult and critical to work towards the upliftment of the people due to their society, which is formed by people from different cultural background, uh, ages, groups, uh, values, and that they uphold. Metaphorically speaking, Every society is like a bundle of flowers, where the beauty of each flower is important to be able to make the entire bouquet of flowers look brilliant. Every flower carries a different fragrance 
has a different size and color, but every attribute, when come together, helps in making the bouquet appear brighter and captivating. To work in organization, firstly we need to understand the fabric of society. Needless to say, that is the responsibility of each and every individual in the community to work towards strengthening the best of our society. Any society is incomplete without the participation of young blood and group. In order to make a society progressive and dynamic, young people should be made an essential part of it. It is rightly said that today's youth is the force, hope and leaders of tomorrow as they are the face of our community, society and nation at large. Young people are harbinger and agent of change in the society, but our youth too has got important responsibilities to discharge their role in the society. It is important for them to draw a lesson for the past, remain vigilant in the present and live with the hope of seeing a better future which will be brighter and move promisingly for the forthcoming generation. The youth should apply their skills, strength, energy, creativity to bring a meaningful change in our society and enable to it to function in the best interest of the people. For all this to take shape, it is important that our youth concentrate on our studies, on their studies, fresh and educate themselves will also well also to empower themselves to build the future of our society. As a youth organization, I feel that Rengma Selozi has lots of challenges and responsibilities to work for the larger interests of the community. I am excited to see the motto of Rengma Selozi, Akazi Ni, meaning my land and my people, which is befitting motto of the organization. Today, our Rengmas are divided in two separate states, Nagaland and Assam. Uh, ruled or governed under different administrative heads. The smaller population with the larger land is now in Assam, whereas the larger population with small land is in Nagaland. We are belonging to the same stocks and family but living in divided house. Who is responsible to restore the Rengmas in situ under one administrative unit? Is it the British or the American? The responsibility is you and me who are living with the blood of the Rengmas. There is no black and white among the Rengmas under heaven. The Rengmas are Rengmas whether he lives in India or America. Division of the Rengmas into two separate states are neither our making nor our forefathers, but the British government for their selfish interests. During the days of your, the Rengmas were known for their uh, par excellence in the field of warfare activities. You may be wondering to know that the Rimas have fought international wars across the boundaries for uh, three times. That is the first Burmese invasion, second Burmese invasion, and third Burmese invasion in the year 1817, 19, and 1821. And the Rima Nagas have participated in these three wars to thwart the invasion of the Burmese in uh, the land of the Nagas. So we fought alongside with our home, Rajas, in three consecutive battles, and we successfully thwarted the movement of the uh, onslaughts of the Burmese forces in the soil of uh, the Rima Nagas. So uh, we were so powerful during this, uh, that period. And uh, we came in contact with those uh, Sukapa, the first Ahom emperors in Assam. When they Soup down into the Brahmaputra belly. During that period, the Rayman Nagas were already there. According to the tradition, it is said that 20 generations have already lived before the invasion or before the soup down of the Ahoms into the Brahmaputra belly. That means 500 years before the coming of the Ahoms in the belly of the Brahmaputra belly, the Rayman Nagas were already settled down there. Now, uh, during the British period, the Rima Nagas had one of the largest population among the Nagas with vast tract of land occupying more than 9,000 square kilometers known as the Rima Hills, which is created by the British government by political proceedings 1790-80 on 18 April 1841, long before the creation of the Naga Hill district, that is in 1866. 
However, due to the transfer of its land and people to the adjoining district of Assam in 1898 and subsequent reorganization of northeastern states after the independence of India, we are now left with just 256 square kilometers for Samanyo district and 8,724 square kilometers for the hills, uh, Rima hills in Assam. So you can imagine uh, 256, that is the Rima hills is uh, 34 times bigger than that of the uh, Samanyo district. And Samanyo district is just 10 uh, times less than the uh, areas of our village. In Kenner village, we have 2,756 square kilometers, but that is now uh, transferred into Assam. So you can imagine how many big uh, our land and people were transferred into Assam. Uh, the Rima Nagas were then placed under different administrative units on the basis of divide and rule policy of the British India. The chunks of land in the Rima Hills, which uh, comprised of more than 34 times the size of the present Samanyo district was transferred into Assam for administrative convenience of the British Raj without the consent and knowledge of the Rima Nagas. By 1866, the British government created the Naga Hill district with the amalgamation of the Rima Hills, 8,700 square kilometers, and the Naga Hills, uh, 1,300 square kilometers, and met Samagutin as its head, uh, administrative headquarters. Uh, during the creation of the Naga Hill district, that is in the year 1866, the Naga Hills was just having 1,300 square kilometers, whereas the Rima Hills had got the 8,724 square kilometer, kilometers. So it merged with the Naga Hill district and formed as one administrative unit under the British government uh, with a headquarter at uh, Samagutin, now Chamukidiman. Uh, okay, and met Samagutin from 1866 till 1898. The Raima Hills was administered under Naga Hill district and the last revenue was submitted in Kohima. The amount came to 872. So in the year 1898, in the first week of December, the Rama Hills was transferred to the adjoining district of uh, Assam, that is uh, Nogaon and Sipsagor district. So uh, that time, the revenue came to 872. That means 872 houses only belonging to the Western Rimas. Means one rupee per house was collected by the British government during that period. However, from January 1899 onwards, the Rima Nagas were then divided into two administrative units. Small, smaller portion of menu was administered under Naga Hill district and the larger portion of the Rima Hills was transferred out to adjacent district was some and administered under Nogaon and Sipsagor district. The central uh, revenue of the Rima Nagas were submitted in the Naga Hills, while the Rima Hills were submitted into the treasury of Nogaon and Sipsagor district of Assam. So uh, the present Samanyo district and the Rima Hills were administered under British government just for 32 years only. After the 32 years of common administrative uh, center, the Rima Hills was transferred after 32 years. With this historical and political development in the past, the Rimas are now living in Assam and Nagaland, much against the wishes of the people, not by choice, but by compulsion, separation, oppression, and subjugation. We had vast track of traditional land and separate geographical identity as Rima Hills, but today we have become lost people and the tribe. Now, according to the nine point agreement and 16 point agreement, there was an agreement signed between the governor of Assam and also the government of India between the Naga National Council and Naga People Convention two times to restore back this uh, forest and also land which was transferred to Assam. So uh, with the transfer of uh, the Rima Hills into the adjoining district of Assam, the Rimas have lost uh, six reserve uh, forests out of 18 reserve forests belonging to the Nagas, six reserve forests belonging to the Rimas were transferred into Assam. And out of 42 uh, tea estates, the Rimas have lost 24 tea estates. The rest uh, were all transferred into the adjoining districts of Assam. So huge chunks of land were lost by the Rima Nagas. Uh, so, uh, the Rimas are one of the biggest victims and losers for the failures of these two agreements. The Rima legislators have to take proactive role in the Nagaland Legislative Assembly 
and debate, uh, debates and discussion being the largest stakeholders. So these are the uh, major losses we find among the Lima Nagas. So to wind up my uh, short speech, I would like to uh, cite one example of a, a story from the story of a frog in a well. So that is uh, due to the microscopic minority of our people in uh, both Assam and Nagaland. I would like to give challenges to all the Rema youths. So the, the story goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a frog lived in a small well. He was so happy uh, with the fresh water and he drank and swim in the well full of lots of mud to play. Lots of uh, juicy insects to eat inside the well. And he used to jump from walls to walls inside the well. And he thought that he is the king of the world. One day the visitor, that is the turtle, he was invited to visit him in the well. So the turtle was trying his uh, level best to visit the turtle who came from the uh, East Sea. So he was trying his level best to uh, go inside the well with a narrow opening. But uh, he could not uh, uh, go inside the well because the opening of the well is so narrow. So he uh, stopped trying to go inside the well. At the same time, he tried to narrate the story how the vast of land in the outside world, that is the big sea, since he came from the sea, he narrated about the beauty of the sea and the vastness of the land. So narrating all this story to the frog in the well, having this, the uh, vastness of outside the well, the frog felt very insignificant and realized how limited his perspective was. So today, the Ringmas also our perspective was so uh, small. Our horizon is very small because we have a vast land, but we have left those land which is occupied by the foreigners. And we are living in just a 256 square kilometers, known as the Semenyo district. So this is the uh, position uh, we are uh, living and also the consequence, the situation we are facing today. So the moral of the story is like this. Uh, the uh, Don't be like a frog at the bottom of a well and think that sky is only as big as the top of the well. There are lots of things for us to explore in this world. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone, but always keep an open mind. So have a big heart, dream big, achieve big, and uh, think beyond your horizon. So with these few thoughts, I would like to convey my best wishes once again to Remastology, not to get discouraged with uh, many impediments and challenges you will come across, but face with boldness without any fear and shudder. Save our land and people in safe hands. Thank you. At the outset, I, on behalf of the Rema Selozi, I express my profound and most sincere gratitude to you all for honoring our invitation with your presence. My heartfelt thanks to all the distinguished invitees, well-wishers, and delegates for their support and cooperation. I also thank each individual who who have been working hard behind the scene to make this event a, a grand success. And to the advisors of RSD, we thank you for your constant support, motivation, and guidance. We are incredibly grateful for your mentorship and invaluable advice you have provided. Ladies and gentlemen, I, an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling weeks ago. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated members who knew their job and are result oriented. Thank you, organizing committee for taking the initiative in bringing the program and making it, and making it a grand success and making uh, this RSE ninth uh, anniversary come third general assembly a grand success this vote of thanks would be uh, largely incomplete without my gratitude to the host
continue youth organization who have been working tirelessly on behalf of RZ. Your imp in impactable uh, generosity and hospitality will not be forgotten. If time is money, then today you have spent millions for us. Thanks to all of you for making this event successful. Third General Assembly he hosted Lejojo Kashuka and Kahun Ungo organization continue group youth organization the Chinosh Bine Haune he opportunity ke Ungo Salozida Kuge Fritz Lejo Hikika Logenu law Haune Hikenu Dao Hong Kenya Hong Hong Kihi Hong Kachu Kachaka Tukia Pu Kiki Show Program Geno, Wapun Kalogino, Hound Chinos Binet, Niki Maja, Joy Memeka Tapu, Timi Memeka Tapu, Law Arranges Maja Law Group Kachaka Tele, How we contribute to Shong, we hit Punkalogino, How what Pichinos Binet. Above all, I give all glory and honor to the Almighty for making this event a resounding success. Long live RSD, uh, Akazu Ni, thank you. Brother Jesus Christ, most in a Genova, I think I'm happy to be a country now. So I thought, I thought, I thought, we are concerned to be sure to be a country today. Also, Google, how we look at La, and you can't have a big sir, much of them, must say, you can look at the other, so we don't look at La. You two, 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 so you can't bring Sandura Katakas in Tachino. Sakyashi Genito Tulikila, a Sasha Kahamuanu, a dinner of Gurisabek hair, Kakaku Bela Katakas Mu Chicho Sa, where the Michel Kunotik Sanu, or Hama Perakubla, Nazar Jisu Christana with Sandy Sa. Now we can summon a demo. Out of the lucky chimney. Amen.